It's Meredith. If you can unmute, go ahead and ask Adam a question. Hey, Adam, I hope you and your family are well. Just curious as to where you feel as though you're at physically right now. Uh, I, I feel good physically. Hi, Meredith, by the way. I feel good physically. Um, hard to say where I'm at, you know, but uh, I've been throwing, been throwing a lot. So this last time I, I threw one inning with a hitter in there uh, swinging. And before that, I had already thrown two and three innings, which is probably unnecessary. But so I feel good. I'm just trying to up my intensity level a little bit. I feel like my volume is good. Just got to get a little more intensity, but no, no complaints. Do you have any idea what the schedule will be for you as you head, head towards the 23rd? Um, yeah, I know we're pitching tomorrow, so that'll be uh, with that'll be two days rest, and then we're going to do one day's rest for a little bit, and then we'll do back-to-back, -back, and then I think we'll have all the boxes checked at that point for us uh, relievers. You mentioned upping the intensity. Will it be difficult coming in? You usually came in middle innings, maybe later in the game, to come in in those situations and not get the extra adrenaline jolt from the crowd? Don't know yet. Maybe, but I think ultimately, you know, you're, a lot of the adrenaline comes from the anxiety over the situation and the nervousness, the kind of the, the fight or flight, you know, of the game situation. So, you know, if I'm in a tight game, I'll probably uh, have plenty of internal uh, adrenaline or whatever you need. So, you know, we'll see. It's, it remains to be seen, but I'm not, not too worried about it. Thank you. Thanks. We'll take the next question from George King. George, go ahead and unmute. Adam, uh, in spring training, you said you wanted to work on being quicker to the plate, and then spring training vanished. I know you were through, you threw a lot under quarantine. I was wondering if that time period hurt or helped your to reach your goal of being quicker to the plate. Um, I, uh, I abandoned the whole uh, no glove tap um, f for all circumstances. I'm still doing it now unless there's a guy on first and I've practiced my no glove tap man on first quite a bit. I feel more comfortable with it now than I did in spring, but, um, you know, just need more reps with it in a real game situation on uh, these inner squads and all that just to see how used to it I am. Um, you know, trying to do my best, uh, to be quicker, but I don't want to sacrifice my pitch quality either. So, you know, it's kind of a double-edged sword. So just first base then, right? Yeah, just a guy on first. With a man on second, I can hold him with my with my eyes, I think. But with a man on first, uh, I have to be a little quicker. Otherwise, they're going to try to go. Take the next question from James Wagner. James, go ahead. Hey, Adam, what's up? Hope uh, you and the family are, are doing well. But, uh, I mean, just, you know, you're, you're so used to, like, your mannerisms, uh, the way you behave on a field in the dugout while you're watching a game. Just all that stuff has to change. Um, I don't know how familiar with our every details uh, in that manual, but what so far has been the hardest to do or uh, what do you have to do? I mean, is, is it hard to like not fist bump when you come in uh, off the mound uh, or spit or whatever it is? Or just... Yeah, um, the the fist bumping is not that hard, but the I do spit a lot when I pitch, so that's something I'm trying to get used to not doing. And then um, what else? Also uh, bringing our own stuff to the shower, like there's no communal soap or shampoo or anything like that. So yeah. the first two times I went to clean myself up and get out of here. I, I forgot it, had to go back to my lockers. It's not a big deal, but it's something you got to get used to little things like that. Yeah. And then do you think some of this stuff is just like to, to help change your behavior? Like who's going to be on you? Like if you do spit during a game, is it, is that uh, part of like each other or like, is it just to help change your behavior basically just overall on principle? I, I have no idea. I mean, I'm, I'm going to try not to think about it while I'm in a real game. Now I'm trying to hold back just because that's what it says in the protocols not to do. So trying to hold back and get used to that, make that second nature, the not spitting part. But I've been spitting a lot while pitching for a long time. It's kind of a nervous tick maybe. So if it happens in the game, you know, then we'll address it then. But uh, I don't know. Like I said, just trying to practice it and get as comfortable as I can uh, with the new stuff. Take the next question from Andy Martino. Andy, go ahead. Adam, uh, 60 game season for a reliever, uh, does it impact the way you'd be willing to be used at all, uh, one way or the other, whether more days in a row because it's a shorter sprint or uh, more careful because you're ramping up faster or, or would you like it to just be treated as if it were a normal season once you get going in terms of how often uh, you're, you're used? Well, I think now this year we don't have the luxury of um, kind of pacing ourselves as much. so. I think as long as I feel like I can pitch and be effective, then I want to be available. Um, you know, 
uh, it, it, that's very much one of those things that depends on the situation. Um, sometimes you pitch two games in a row and you feel great that third day. Even three days in a row, feel great that fourth day. And sometimes you pitch twice and you feel real lousy. So you just got to be honest because you don't want to go out there compromised. You know, th at the end of the day, the, the goal is to win the game as a team. So it's not like a selfish thing. But if I feel good enough to go, I'm going to want the ball. Would you push yourself a little more um, if you felt a little tired knowing that it's only 60 games? Um, yeah, but I mean, like I said, it, it would just have to be one of those things where I felt like I could go out there and uh, execute my pitches and get guys out. I mean, that's the biggest thing. It doesn't really matter. Um, you know, it's whatever it takes. I mean, I, I, a lot of years we've had like a two days on, one day off um, type of rule throughout the season. But then, you know, September comes and desperate times call for more pitching. You know, I've been in that spot a few times and that's part of the game. You want the ball, you want to push your team into the playoff. So... You know, for me, I think just we'll play it by ear. We do have a lot of guys. I don't think we'll get too worn out. But, I mean, you know, one of the things you take pride in as a late inning guy is, you know, taking the ball as much as possible. Thank you. Take the next question from Brendan Cuddy. Brendan, you can unmute. Adam, thanks for taking the time. It's good to see you. You hosted Gary Cole, doing a lot of bullpens this shutdown. How did those originate? How did, where did the idea come from those? And did you take anything from those? Did you learn anything from Garrett during that time? Um, it just originated because uh, I knew he had moved up here uh, even before spring training started. We worked out a couple times together here. And then when the shutdown happened, I was driving back up to New York. I, we talked on the phone uh, trying to figure out our throwing situation. You know, I told him I had a mound. So that, that, that became attractive. And then um, we just kind of made it work from there. I think it's always nice when you have, you know, multiple guys on the same team, you know, under the same circumstances that want to stay in shape and get better and all that. Um, learning stuff, yeah. I mean, I watched him a lot very closely. We talked a lot about, you know, his pitches, how he holds them, what his mentality is behind him, you know, see what I can do to add to my game. Obviously, we're different pitchers, but there's always some small stuff that you feel like you can improve upon, especially uh, learning from one of the best. So. Um, I hope it worked out uh, for me and, you know, remains to be seen how, how it'll turn out. Thank you, Adam. Thanks. We'll see. Does anybody have a last question for Adam before we let him go? Uh, back, to, back to James. James, go ahead and unmute. Right, I'll just ask another one. Uh, just, I mean, just because you guys, this, this whole season will be different, but does, how, how would you guys, like, feel as a team? I mean, you don't get to hang out the same way. You don't have the same meetings. Like, in terms of, like, that you know, intangible aspect of being a team. Like, how has that gone? How will that go? Because, yeah, meetings are different. You guys can't sit talk in the clubhouse like before. Like, how, how has that gone so far? I do think it'll be different. Um, I, you know, I've noticed that I haven't even seen some of the guys on the 60 man just because we're all spaced out coming in at different times um, on different programs right now, which is how you have to do it. I do think, like, once it's a unit and we're kind of playing, I'll at least see everybody, be able to talk to them a little bit. Um, but obviously we can't, you know, sit around the table and hang out like normal. So it'll be a little different, but I'm sure we'll find a way to, to pass the time in a, in a safe way, uh, you know, together. And that's, that's still important to us because, you know, we're in this together and it is a team thing. So I uh, just want to try to maintain that team feeling as much as possible.